Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'm going to discuss the government's approach to Brexit from uh, another angle. I'll be discussing what the current state of play is regarding official government Brexit policies, how they've basically all stalled because they keep running to the brick wall of reality and how the Tories cannot just keep talking but getting nowhere for another year and a half. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So the Brexit media were all apoplectic on the front pages of yesterday's papers. Front page headlines all whining that their precious Brexit was under threat. This was despite the fact that the government scotched the idea that they're seeking this Swiss-style relationship with the EU. This is also despite knowing that the Swiss-style relationship that the government think they can get, which isn't actually a Swiss-style relationship at all really, is unobtainable. So why the exaggerated headlines? because their precious Brexit is under threat. Columnist Sam Friedman made a superb point at the weekend. He said that the only generation where the majority still support Brexit are the over 65s. The idea that it can be settled while that is true is laughable. And this is the thing. It's not only the demographic that made the Brexit leave vote happen in 2016, but it does remain the only group still keeping Brexit alive. Now, before I get into bother, Yes, I know there are loads of you who are against Brexit and always were and over 65. But the over 65s as a group nonetheless represent the group who still support Brexit. If this was either not true or if other groups of people voted in larger numbers, Brexit would be done for now. That would be it. It'd be finished. Labour wouldn't be going on their, their current Brexit rhetoric. There'd be no need for it. It would be done. We'd just be counting down until the general election. That's it. It's the re I'm not saying the whole thing would be reversed very quickly, but nonetheless, we know we would be moving there. It's the reason why neither Labour nor the Conservatives can actually say, this was a silly idea, let's stop it right now. Actually, there are other pressures on the Conservatives, but it is literally the only one on Labour. That these people are going to decide who forms the next government is the sole reason why Labour are unable to say that once we've normalised relations with the EU again, they, they won't be going further and reversing Brexit properly. But it will happen. You know, I've gone over this multiple times from multiple angles in multiple videos as to why it's certain. Every, every direction you look at this, there is no sustainable path to maintaining Brexit. But here's another one. The thing about people is that they get older and die. Nothing so certain as death and taxes. The elderly aren't supporting Brexit because it's what you do as you get older. You know, it, they're just the generation who have this rose-tinted view about life before we joined the EEC. It wasn't so bad, they said. Yes, it was. What they mean is they remember when they were young, fit and healthy. Not the country. They. And they were full of hopes and dreams. That's what their nostalgia is for. But as with everyone else thinking of how the country was in their youth, they merge it with the way uh, they were. That's what they missed, the way they were, not the way things were. The same is not true of people my age. We grew up in the European, well, not the European Union, the EEC and then the European Union. But we grew up in this, this union of nations. It doesn't scare us. You know, it's, it's, this, this notion is not true of people my age. In 20 years time, my generation isn't suddenly going to become more Eurosceptic as people get older, they tend to get more conservative. Sure, somehow something flips. But you don't get more Eurosceptic. That fear of the EU doesn't exist in significant numbers in my generation. We will become the dominant voting bloc and then that'll be the end of it for Brexit. And I'm not suggesting we have to wait 20 years and then suddenly there's a cliff edge. There's a, there's a cold snap that kills off all the current elderly. No, it, we're not going to bugger about for 20 years before reversing it all in one go. That's not realistic on any level. But this is why Brexiteers are panicking. They know that their main support base is the next in line for the choir immaculate. And there's only one way to build up support amongst those of us who will still be around to vote in the long term. And that is to show us the benefits of Brexit. Oh dear. I mean, let's look at the current state of play as far as implementing Brexit is going. Because that's what people say. The, the head of the CBI, people pointing out yesterday, was saying, why don't you just implement the Brexit deal you've already got? It's all right talking about this and that and this and that. 
Why don't you implement what you've got? Well, let's look at what they've got. First of all, the Northern Ireland Protocol is still bogged down as the UK government tries to come up with a practical implementation which satisfies the nutters in the Tory party, the nutters in the unionist movement and cold hard reality. Although Sunak seems to genuinely want a deal doing and quickly, he wants that deal. He hasn't actually come up with any proposals. So how can there be a deal when he's not saying what he wants? He, in that respect, he's really no better than Boris Johnson. So that's not going well at the moment. Second, our post-Brexit immigration policy, you know, with the end of freedom of movement for skilled and motivated EU workers and a points-based system that actually makes it hard to recruit people we need, businesses are citing as the number one concern a labour shortage. We are failing to face up to the fact that we have more vacancies than people able to do the jobs. In fact, I talked about that in the first video today. This is due to a combination of illness, retirement, and a lack of freedom of movement that means the number of people in work now is well down on pre-COVID and pre-Brexit times. We don't have enough people working in Britain. That simple. There are only two ways to deal with it. Massively increase immigration, which will not only upset the gammons, but make the hard Brexit seem somewhat pointless, or accept that our economy has to keep shrinking until it can match the available workforce, in which case you're not actually demonstrating benefits of Brexit to those of us who are just waiting to replace the current Brexit support base as the largest voting bloc. Times are ticking, fellas. My generation is, is mostly against Brexit, and it's dead man's shoes here. As the current older generation pops their clogs, we all get older and more crabby, more crotchety. We point more often, we moan more often, and we'll start voting in larger numbers at some point. And we will not be wanting any Brexit bollocks on the manifesto. Third, our post-Brexit import controls. Well, these have stalled too. Now, we do now have a custom system, technically. Uh, that took a year. But these procedures don't include many checks. You know, carrying out proper checks means slowing down the flow of imports too much. So basically, our customs procedure is a sort of honesty box. So the official line is we accept higher levels of smuggling and the tax revenues that hurts in order to keep imports flowing. As for standards controls, we have none at all. Although I'm not aware of any particular link between this and the avian flu that has been buggering up things at the moment, it is the sort of thing that a lack of standards controls risks happening more often now. But the bottom line is import controls, another aspect of Brexit implementation that's just not happening. And I don't mean it's not happened. I don't mean it hasn't been implemented yet. I don't mean they're still proceeding with it, it's just going slowly. I mean it's actually stopped, stopped dead. Further implementation has been put off indefinitely. Fourth, our post-Brexit trade deals. Put simply, they're all either on the same or worse terms than the ones we could have had as EU members. This freedom to do our own thing has not actually produced anything of value. The Australia and New Zealand deals have even been called out by a former cabinet minister who was involved in the negotiations. So another aspect of Brexit that hasn't been delivered, better trade deals. Fifth, the UKCA mark nonsense. That keeps being delayed because it's unworkable. It will continue to be delayed because it will continue to be unworkable. The same applies to other forms of divergence. I hear now that the government have postponed its plans to require more red tape from vet visits to farms now. I talked about this recently. A load of Brexit red tape, it's got nothing to do with EU demands. This is the British government wanting it. Would have been impossible for some farmers to export their produce if it came in. That's been shelved. Government Brexit policy seems to be to announce measures, announce dates when things are going to come in, wait until a few weeks before that date comes and then just say, oh, we're going to delay it. They've already done it twice in the last week. Twice in the last week. And to top it all, even the trade and cooperation agreement that we have with the EU, you think, well, at least that's done. No, that's all up for grabs again in a few years. That's a short term thing. There's, uh, we renegotiate the whole bloody lot in a few years. Even that's not settled. The reality of Brexit is that not one single aspect of it has been implemented. And the government seems to have no plan for doing so with anything. Actually, tell a lie. One thing that was actually implemented, we implemented the end to freedom of movement. As a result, people in the UK with an EU passport have way more freedom, are way more employable, and all the rest of us got out of it was Nigel Farage telling us that immigration problems are actually way worse than it ever was. Nice one. 
surely Sunak's Tories have to at least try to implement something. If they spend the next year and a half trapped like a rabbit caught in headlights because they can't reconcile what the ERG wants with reality, then they're not going to be persuading my generation that Brexit has benefits. There are all sorts of reasons why Brexit should start to be reversed properly within just a few years. I say, well, I don't think we're going to carry on as we are for 20 years and it all changes overnight. This is a, this is a process that happens slowly. But that is nonetheless the failsafe. It's really this simple. If Brexit's only chance is the support of people who are simply not going to be around in 20 years, Brexit is a doomed project. But like I say, my generation becoming the dominant voting force in future is just the fail-safe system. I think it's doomed rather sooner than that, and that's why the Brexit papers are going mad. If the government don't start finding some way of convincing people of tangible benefits, game over. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.